Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today we have got a Game Week 30 video on this Monday all about the best picks for Game Week 30. So I've been doing a similar video for the last couple of weeks. You guys seem to have really enjoyed these videos so I'm going to keep doing them. This time we're going to do it for the blank Game Week players. So those players who have a fixture for the blank Game Week, we're going to go through the fixtures, we're going to go through every single team who has a fixture in Game Week 30 and we are going to try and rate the players of who are the good ones to pick and who are maybe some risky ones to pick and if they're not on this video basically probably don't you don't even want them in your team so guys if you do enjoy this video please do leave a like please do subscribe but further ado let's have a quick look at the fixtures for game week 30 because there's not many so blank game week 30 like i say there is not many fixtures just four fixtures that's it, which means a total of eight teams with, uh, with, a, with a fixture this week. Twelve teams blanking. It's not ideal. Some of you guys are going to be on free hits. Some of you guys are going to be taking hits to try and field uh, you know, a decent amount of players. I would say that if you can get to eight or nine players, I think that's going to be good enough for you this week uh, because it really is a, 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 an awkward situation, really. But here are the fixtures anyway, guys. So we've got Arsenal versus Villa, Aston Villa versus Arsenal, Brentford versus Leicester, um, Leeds play Wolves, Leicester play Brentford, Tottenham play West Ham, and West Ham play Tottenham. And uh, Wolves play leads there as well. So you can also see from this game week that there's not a lot of easy fixtures, I suppose. Um, you know, the only kind of green fixtures I would say for this game week are Leicester is green fixture against Brentford at home. And Wolves have a green fixture against Leeds at home. But that's not to say there aren't, there isn't anything here that is of any interest. Obviously, we've got Spurs there and they've got some big players. We've got some, you know, Arsenal have got some pretty good players and are in good, really good form as well. I think we should order these fixtures in order of who we should be targeting and who we shouldn't be targeting. So let's order them quickly now. And as you can see, I have put Spurs at the top. I think Spurs are the number one team to be targeting this game week. Uh, this game against West Ham often has goals in it. Sometimes doesn't, to be fair, more recently. But typically, going back, this fixture is a really hard-fought fixture where both teams are really going at it. It's not really an easy fixture for either team, but both teams will be really, really keen to win this derby match. Uh, Spurs, in particular, do need to win some games if they are kind of uh, compete for top four as it's kind of getting further and further out of their hands, isn't it? Uh, we've got Arsenal against Aston Villa. Arsenal in fantastic Form right now so even though Aston Villa away seems like a kind of a difficult fixture Arsenal are just showing such good form at the moment they really are one of the top teams in the Premier League at the moment really you know if you're talking about the form teams it really goes City um, Liverpool and well, those two at the top probably Liverpool at the top at the moment and then after that is arguably Arsenal with the third best form at the moment they're, they're arguably playing better than Chelsea and uh, Newcastle obviously have been playing really well but they lost uh, against Chelsea recently as well didn't they this game week or last game week so yeah, Arsenal really are on the top of their game at the moment, so we are expecting them to do some business against Aston Villa there. Uh, Leicester against Brentford is quite nice because it's just a very good fixture, and there are some nice Leicester players to pick from. Wolves against Leeds, similarly, good fixture. Um, let's see who we can pick from Wolves, and we will go for all of the teams, of course. And then aside from that, guys, you know, it's kind of uh, a lot, lots of risky players to go for that you could go for. But um, we're going to go team by team now, guys. Uh, but quickly, first of all, let me show you how I'm categorising players. So I've decided to split players into three categories. Essential players, these are really good options for game week 30. Optional players, which are kind of, you know, fairly decent ideas to go for these players, uh, could be could work out pretty well. And then we've got some punts. So I wouldn't recommend too many punts uh, for this game week. If I, they are not in this video, if the player is not mentioned in this video, it's probably because I just think they are just too risky and you kind of have to go for those players at your own peril. I just don't feel comfortable recommending anyone outside of this video, to be honest, and, and that's, uh, that's the truth of it. So uh, yeah, guys, whether you're on a free hit, whether you're just trying to make some transfers, whether you just want some good players for game week 30, hopefully we're going to have you covered in this video. Let's get on with it, starting off with the number one team to target. So, Spurs, they have two essential players, and I, I should say, guys, there's only two essential players I, I've kind of designated for this game week. I, I think that's outside of Kane and Son, I really just can't see how anyone else can be considered essential for game week 30. There's just not, because there's no Liverpool, there's no City in this game week, you know, there's no Chelsea. I, I'm, I'm struggling to find, you know, essential players, particularly if the fixtures aren't amazing either. But uh, I've, I've got Kane and Son here as essential players. I don't need to tell you guys why. They're just, in the, they're, you know, in the really good top four aren't they both of those players Kane obviously is on those penalties as well Son you know maybe you'd say his form is not phenomenal at the moment but we know what he can do you know some games you watch him and he could score like you know, you know he could have scored three goals in a, in a game a couple of game weeks ago for example he could have outscored Kane it didn't happen on the day but I just think they're they are in a similar 
you know, similar playing field there. Kane is obviously the better choice. If you can get Kane this game week, um, that would be absolutely amazing. And if you can captain Kane, even better. You know, he's really going to be the number one captain pick for the game week, isn't he? But Sonny is up there as well as, as, a, as a real essential player. Aside from that, we've got Kulisevsky. And outside of Kulisevsky, who I think has just been phenomenal recently, by the way, I've got Regulon and Doherty. And the reason why they're both punts is because... I'm not fully convinced to buy a clean sheet for Spurs this week. If you could just pick three players, I would make them Kane, Son and Kulisevsky. And, you know, if that's not an option or you've already got a defender or you really want to get a defender for future game weeks, for example, from Spurs, then fair enough. Regulon uh, uh, is probably good for this game week uh, before Sessegnon comes back from his injury. Uh, Doherty is probably the, the better one to go for for the slightly longer term, isn't he? Uh, but both very good options um, if you do fancy a punt. But uh, that's all they are, punts. Outside of that for Spurs I don't really think I'm interested in any of their other players really so you know if you're picking from Spurs players these are the five players that I would pick from Arsenal, I would say, don't have any essential players, but there are some good players here, and I'm, I'm really putting Lacazette up this game week. I'm putting him up. I've kind of, you know, ahead of a last game week, ahead of game week 29, obviously I took a hit to get in Lacazette into my team, and I was really quite keen on that move because his underlying stats are actually suggesting that he should be outscoring Saka, which he did incidentally, in, well, so far in game week 29, he has outscored Saka. So uh, just through that penalty, the penalties are obviously a huge factor, uh, having those penalties is a huge factor for any FBL player. We saw that with Kane and Salah at the weekend, didn't we? That, you know, penalties are just so important for your players. So, um, yeah, I, I'm actually genuinely putting Lacazette in the same uh, category as Saka now as both of these players are players who I expect to be the most likely players to get goals and assists for Arsenal. Outside of that, it becomes a little bit more risky. Ramsdale is obviously an optional player. We know he can score some really nice points because he gets saves and bonus points even when he does you know even when he doesn't keep a clean sheet, he's getting save points and if he does keep a clean sheet, you know you're onto something really really good there. So, he's a really good option to have. And outside of that, we're really talking about Odegaard, Martinelli, these cheap midfield options to go for uh, Martinelli maybe slightly rotation risk. Uh, Odegaard very nailed on, but perhaps not quite as explosive as someone like Martinelli. Martinelli, of course, obviously, you know, his minutes are a little bit of a risk. He usually comes off the pitch around the 70th minute, even when he does start. So he's not really a, a player you get a lot of minutes. X mins pretty low. Odegaard, X mins a little bit higher. Saka is even better than that still. Um, so yeah, Saka is definitely the main midfielder you want to go for. But if you fancy a budget or a punt option, then there are some other options. You guys will notice that I've not got any defenders this game week and away game against Aston Villa I feel like Aston Villa have a good chance of scoring in this game so you know I, I think I would kind of try and focus a little bit more on the attackers than the, the defenders perhaps Arsenal have shown some slight defensive fragilities um, over the last couple of weeks only slight only slight but I wouldn't be super confident about a, a, a clean sheet out in, a, in an away game against Aston Villa so I'm not saying avoid the defenders necessarily. Ramsdale is still a really good option. If you've got a player like Ben White or Kieran Tierney in your team anyway, then, you know, why not just keep them? But I, I don't know if I'd necessarily be bringing them in with the expectation that they'll get a lot of points. But you never know. But I'm saying if I'm going to go for a Arsenal defender, it's going to be Ramsdale. Ramsdale is the guy to go for. And, uh, you know, if you have a cheap other defender, maybe, or something like that for Arsenal, then, you know, fair enough too. But those are my Arsenal players. You know, a special eye on, on Lacazette, who I really do think is going to compete with Saka for the most amount of points at Arsenal over the, you know, final stretch of fixtures, really. Now, Leicester is a really interesting one. I think it might be time to get back on some Leicester players. Madison and Harvey Barnes, I like a lot in particular. Um, you know, obviously we know what Madison can do, but he is a little bit streaky, Madison. And I don't know if he's necessarily in said streak at the moment so um, I, I would actually if I had to choose one player between Madison and Barnes at this exact moment I would edge towards Barnes a little bit he has been outperforming Madison a little bit in recent game weeks and I do like the idea of, of Barnes kind of on that left hand side attacking Bre the right side of Brentford's defence where they are a little bit weaker on that side Brentford are so Barnes I, I just kind of like it I kind of like the look of that we saw like he's you know some really good finishing from him recently you know creativity as well uh, both good options Madison and Barnes we know what Madison 
Harrison can do, don't we, of course. But uh, I, I am, I'm really kind of having a strong look at Barnes, you know, particularly as I'm going to be on a free hit this game week. I think Barnes is going to be one of the first names on my team sheet. But guys, of course, at the end of this video, I will rank these players as for the, from the best to the eighth best, so the top eight players to target this game week. I will be ranking them at the end of this video. Um, but, but I'm, I'm just going to say, tell you guys, Barnes is in the top eight. I really do like the look of him. Um, aside from that, guys, if you fancy a little pump, uh, I, I put a Marty there just because he's 3.9 million. It's just so cheap, isn't it? It's such a cheap defender. So if you're just looking for an enabler, um, a Marty could be a really good option. Just, you know, decent chance of a clean sheet, I suppose, against Brentford. And Schmeichel as well, you know, Actually, Leicester have not been too bad defensively recently. Schmeichel, you know, has improved, whereas earlier on in the season, he was, at, you know, maybe underperforming on his XGC um, earlier on in the season. But he's doing a little bit better now, which is really nice to see. He's, you know, he's making some good saves uh, and, and saving more than he probably should be, which is a good thing. So 4.8 million, not bad for a goalkeeper. And we know that Leicester, not only have they got a fixture this game week, but potentially a couple more double game weeks to come in future game weeks as well. We know they've got fixtures that need to be rescheduled. So, that's who I'd go for, Madison Barnes, and then if you fancy a punt, Schmeichel or Marty as a budget enabler as well is pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Schmeichel is, is probably going to come into my team at some point before the end of the season. I can tell you that maybe a similar thing for uh, Barnes as well. Let's move on. So Wolves have leads at home, and I, I've kind of not put any punts in this uh, in this list. I, I didn't really feel like putting any punts because I feel like there's no point in going for the punts. The punts would be players like I don't know, um, you know, uh, maybe a Sice or, or a Kilman. Sice is more expensive than Cody, so you may as well just get Cody. Um, Kilman is you know only slightly cheaper than Cody, so you may as well just get Cody. Um, so you know it kind of felt a little bit silly going for punts. I mean, if you already have these players, fair enough. But this video is really talking about bringing players in rather than uh, already having them, right? But yeah, I've got. Four Four optional players here that I think all have pretty decent options. There's not really any punts that I would really go for from Wolves, if I'm completely honest. Jimenez, you know, to have a forward at home against Leeds is... You know, very very beneficial in itself. Uh, Cody is obviously you know the best defender to go for for Wolves. He's nailed on. Whereas as uh, Willy Bolly might actually potentially replace a Kilman or a uh, or or a Sice on the other side. And the fullbacks, who knows what's going on with the fullbacks? They seem to rotate every game, so I wouldn't even be risking that one. Absolutely no point in that risk. Saar, we know he's making a lot of saves at the moment. I really like him as a goalkeeper for this game. We can on a free hit. I think Saar would potentially be the goalkeeper to go for. Um, you know, just knowing the amount of uh, saves he makes and how Wolves are actually pretty decent defensively as well. Um, and it's a home game against Leeds. It's a really good fixture, you know. Uh, but we are expecting primarily goals. And this is why I put Podence on this list. A player who I'm actually really quite keen on. This is the player, kind of maybe a little bit of a differential, but this is the player. If I could have one Wolves player for this game week... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I would have to put Podence into serious consideration. I mean, Saar, obviously, um, you know, good goalkeeper option. But in terms of outfield players, I'd say Podence is probably the best player to go for. He's been shooting a lot recently. He's been quite creative recently. He's looking really, really, really good recently, to be fair. And one of the few Wolves attackers that actually is looking like on some really decent form. So if we're looking for, for this Leeds game, a really good game for attackers, and we're trying to figure out the right attacker to go for from Wolves, Maybe Daniel Podence is the one to go for. I mean, on my free hit, again, on my free hit, I feel like Podence is a player I'd quite like to try and sneak in to this to, to my free hit team um, and just kind of see what happens because I think that could be a pretty nice one, actually. So a sneaky little differential there, guys. So maybe one to think about. Maybe one to consider. That's all I'm going to say. Aston Villa play against Arsenal at home. It's really not a good fixture. I know it's at home and I know, you know, typically maybe earlier on in the season we probably put Arsenal as down as a, a grey fixture, a, a, a medium difficulty fixture, Arsenal at home. I don't think so anymore. I think this has got to go down as a hard fixture now and um, yeah. Coutinho is probably the only player that you would put any serious consideration in. I did put some other players as punts on this list because I do think there are other players that could potentially nick points against Arsenal, nick FPL points, should I say, against Arsenal. Ings is looking better than Watkins at the moment, um, but he is slightly more expensive. Uh, Cash is looking, you know, pretty good, to be fair. I think we all agree that Cash is looking really good at the moment, but maybe a little bit too expensive for a defender, a bit punty. Uh, Ramsey is just so cheap, you know, he's always worth a punt. You know, when you win a player is that cheap similarly with what i said about amati to have that enabler some players are just so cheap for what they are offering you know if they're a starting player every single game for that price you've really got to consider them particularly when they're playing for a not so bad team as aston villa are not so bad team 
So, yeah, for this game week, I'm not too keen on Aston Villa players. Coutinho is the only player who has that magic, I suppose, that you would actually be confident about him getting something against Arsenal. And I do think Aston Villa have the, have the strong potential of getting a goal against Arsenal. Who's it going to come from? I don't know. If I had to guess, Coutinho. But, you know, obviously Ings, Watkins, Cash and Ramsey are all up there as well in terms of players who could potentially contribute towards goals against Arsenal. West Ham, I thought I would be recommending a little bit more than this, but I'm really struggling to pick West Ham players that I like. If Jared Bowen was available, and we knew Jared Bowen was available, which is looking doubtful, he's looking really kind of doubtful for game week 30, then he would be, uh, you know, he would be really, really, really good player to go for, a really good player to go for against Spurs, and you'd kind of just hope that Spurs would have their bad game, because, you know, Spurs are up and down, up and down, really good, really bad, really good, really bad. You'd hope that this would be a really bad for, game for Spurs, and, um, you know, Bowen would absolutely do the business, but without Bowen, you know, it's kind of difficult to figure out where the goals are going to come from West Ham, and it's probably going to be quite random. It's going to be, you know, <laughs> you know, there's it's just as much chance as Declan Rice or or Soshek scoring, or you know, uh, maybe uh, I don't know, like a uh, Ryan Frederick scoring as there is an Antonio scoring. It really is really difficult to pick one player from West Ham that you think is going to do well, and that's uh, I don't really like that situation. I usually like to pick FPL players who are the stars of the show. And I don't think there is a star of the show without Bowen in this West Ham team, um, which is quite unfortunate. The closest player that I would say comes to that would be for now. He's putting, he's putting up fairly good underlying numbers and he is getting the occasional goal contribution as well. You know, I know he only he got one in, in 29, didn't really get too much before that. But slightly longer term, and if you look on the underlying stats as well, he does look like... The second best attacker in a way for West Ham. So he's not he's not a Bowen. He's nowhere near a Bowen. This is an away game against Spurs. Should be quite a, a good competition because this game is always a good competition. But I'm really struggling to pick a player uh, from, from West Ham. So, you know, they're all punts. Um, but there's not really many punts that I would actually take any serious consideration towards. Uh, for now is probably being the only one. Antonio, maybe, I guess. Leeds uh, away against Wolves. Are we really expecting too much? I don't know. Um, you know, what are we expecting from Wolves here? You know, they're not going to score more than one goal, really. But if they, if they are going to score a goal, um, Rafinha is probably going to be the guy involved, right? I know Rafinha's not even been in particularly good form himself. He's missing chances and stuff like that. I know he grabbed an assist at the end um, in game week 29, but is it really good enough? Oh, not really. I wouldn't be too confident about Leeds players at all, but if you had to punt on one Leeds player, I would say Rafinha would be the player to go for. And finally, Brentford. There's really not much here. I mean, Leicester away, it could be worse as a fixture, I suppose, but do we trust Brentford on a typical game week? You know, if it wasn't, if we weren't so limited for players this game week, would we be even thinking about Brentford players? Probably not, with the exception of Tony. Now, if you were to go for Tony, we would have to be completely real with ourselves and say we are hoping for penalty goals because if we're very realistic, Tony's goal contributions are more often than not penalties. And, and that's absolutely fine. You know, penalties are a situation where you've got to be in it to win it. Leicester have just given away a penalty against Arsenal literally just, um, you know, yesterday as I make this video. So, um, you know, that there's always a chance of penalties. Like I say, you have to be in it to win it. You have to have the player to have the chance of getting the benefits from the penalty, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm sure that makes sense to you guys. Uh, aside from that, could Tony potentially get something from a corner or something like that? Get on the end of something from a corner? Maybe, I suppose. Uh, but, yeah, you would really be hoping for a penalty here. And that's why it's a punt. It's possible that this could go well. If you were to pick one player from Brentford, this would be the player. Outside of Tony, though, there's, there's, there's no one really that, that I personally really want to go for. I don't know if you guys feel any differently to that. Uh, but there we go. That is the last team. Let's have a look and rank the best eight players, in my opinion, for Game Week 30. So guys, here are my top eight picks for Game Week 30. My favourite eight players, the eight players that I believe, just guesswork here guys, I know it's just guesswork and predictions, but my prediction is these will be the top 
scoring players for game week 30. We've got Kane, we've got Son, those are really obvious. We've got Saka, um, you know, a really good player for Arsenal. We know he's like really nailed on and in really good form as well. We've got Barnes there, a player who, my pe favourite player from Leicester at the moment. I think he's going to do really well against Brentford. I've got Kulisevsky there as the third Spurs attacking option. You know, Spurs attack is looking really good. Kulisevsky is looking really good. We've got Madison, you know, potentially going to score well uh, alongside Barnes there. I think Barnes will outscore Madison, but uh, yeah, I I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we've got Lacazette there, who I, I don't know. I was tempted to put Lacazette higher, um, but just because of his price, I think we have to put him a little bit lower. Certainly players like, you know, even though they are midfielders, Saka, Barnes, Kulisevsky and Madison are providing a much better value for money than Lacazette, I would say, even though I think Lacazette will probably score similarly similarly to the uh, the four players above him, you know, maybe not quite the, the heights of a Son or a Kane, but, you know, he, he'll do quite well. And, you know, you'll notice that I've got no defenders in this list because because of the nature of the fixtures, they're all pretty, you know, interesting clashes. It's very difficult to predict where the clean sheets are going to come from. You know, ordinarily, you would say that Brentford at home game for Leicester, there's a, maybe a decent chance of a uh, of clean sheet there, but on the other end of that you know Leicester you know have been kind of up and down in terms of their defense a little bit you know we don't do we fully trust them they were just doing so badly defensively before they have slightly picked it up now but do we trust them yet I don't know I don't know that you know maybe the two goals uh, conceded against Arsenal has, has not helped Maybe we could consider some lesser defensive players, but I, I don't think they make my top eight. Uh, so Saar against Leeds is the only defender, well, I mean a goalkeeper, but defensive player that I've put in my top eight players just because Saar has just uh, been such a, a consistently good performing goalkeeper all season, making plenty of saves, Wolves keeping plenty of clean sheets, and I do think um, Leeds away from home at Wolves are going to potentially struggle a little bit against them. Um, so there we go. Those would be my top eight players. Obviously, that means that by proxy, I think Kane is the best captain. Son is the second best captain and so on and so forth, probably. Uh, but yeah, those are, the, those are the top picks. Those are who I'd go for, guys. If you haven't got some players from this list, try and get some of them. Basically, that's all I'm going to say. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy this, please do leave a like. Please do subscribe if you're new around here as well. If you are watching this on Monday before the Man City game, then I should tell you that I am streaming. I'm going to do a strategy stream after the Man City versus Crystal Palace game. So uh, do make sure you tune into that. Obviously, if we if, if that stream has already gone ahead, you can go back and check the stream replay out if you want. And we'll be talking all FBL strategy stuff. So that's going to be pretty interesting, I'm sure, ahead of uh, you know, a Blank game week and some potential doubles and, and blanks coming up. It's, it's getting to the crazy part of this, the uh, season, so these strategy streams are going to be good. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I don't know if I already said like, subscribe. I don't know if I already said that or not, but whatever. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Plenty more content to come this game week, as there always is. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.